Hey everybody, today we are going to be talking about a devastating technique, a technique that's often overlooked in training. And if you're not training with this right now, then I think you should add it to your repertoire. Big word there, but I used it. We're going to be talking about headbutts today. We're going to be seeing them in combat sports, and I'm going to show them in a bunch of self-defense situations. I'm telling you, these headbutt knockouts are crazy. Stay tuned. Watch what you... <laughs> Inside, inside fighting, yeah. Dangerous, dangerous martial arts. Pow, pow, pow. Ooh, ah. Before we get started, I would love for you to check out my store, InsideFightingStore.com. Very original name there. And uh, check out the instructional I have up right now. It's fantastic. So far, we're getting really good responses. I don't know who we is. I'm alone here. But that's besides the point. It's a... Very effective street self-defense instructional. It's a combination of everything I've learned my whole life. I have a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, guru in Filipino martial arts. I've done Muay Thai. I've done Sambo. And it compresses it into a real street effective approach with pre-fight engagement and all the stuff that's often, often missed in combat sports. Okay? So it's the best of both worlds. If you don't like it, I told you before. I'll tell you again. You can just message me and I'll refund you. How, how's that? How's, how's, how's that for a guarantee? All right, so here we go. So I want to talk about headbutts. In my opinion, my humble opinion, headbutts are the most underused weapon in self-defense. Now, combat sports don't allow them, often because they're really quick fight enders, they're devastating, they're brutal, and they cause a ton of damage, and they're very, kind of in the same way as elbows, very lacerating. They cause a lot of direct trauma, superficial trauma as well. Now, one thing I will say about Headbutts versus elbows. Elbows might be my favorite thing. It's kind of like a close competition. And they each have their place. But elbows cause a lot more what I would call, again, superficial damage, but not as much blunt force trauma as what you see with headbutts. Headbutts are just, they're brutal, folks. They change the game, and they can be pulled off from anywhere. So we're going to look at how they're used in these kind of combat sport environments here. Let me just pull up some of these videos, and we can start watching them. Now, there's only a few sports... Well, that was quick. Let's just go back and see that again. Bam. Okay. Now, in combat sambo specifically, let me just come back here. In combat sp sambo specifically, I would say that headbutts are incredibly effective because, number one, you do have a little bit of a head protector. Kind of reduces the, the trauma of the impact. But what you do have is grips. And when you can kind of roll people around like this or whip them back and forth and then whip them right into a headbutt, you're generating significantly more force than when you don't have any type of clothing to grab onto. Here's the sports that I know of where headbutts are utilized a lot. And I'll just put on this next one in combat sambo here. So, damn, again, quick. What I love about these is they're all coming from like these grappling positions. Like we learn judo, we learn Brazilian jiu-jitsu, we learn, you know, uh, uh, sambo, let's say not combat sambo. And what you realize is that in all these clinch positions, all these close quarter positions where someone's thinking about throwing you, your head can just drop right in. Now, uh, these are the systems that I've seen use headbutts extremely effectively. Kudo, Combat Sambo, Lethway, arguably the best of all because there's really no head protection. It's just such a brutal sport. I'm going to show you that next. And then there's crazy Russians, let's just be honest, who in MMA have formed leagues where they not only fight 15 people and set up the craziest rules where it's like one on three, but they also allow headbutts. And that's the other place where I see headbutts often used. Outside of the street. And we'll show some street fights also. Now, let's just look at some of these Lethway knockouts and what we see here. Because headbutts change the game. Now, if you look, they almost dropped them, almost KO'd them. Just that short, short movement. Now, what's amazing about headbutts, and this is the real thing that makes them special, is they do not require full range of motion to cause damage or to KO the person. You literally could be an inch away from them. You know, everyone talks about the dangers of the one-inch punch. No, the one-inch headbutt is where the secret really lies. And it just ends a fight. And it's incredibly hard to stop and block them. As you can see, he's getting punched a lot. But when he, it's over. Now, if we look at that again, the line of action there, let's just look at where he was, and then how much distance he had to cover with his head. And then see why headbutts are so special. That's all it was. Now, if you look, I'm going to turn sideways here. This was the range. This was the fighting range, and this is what he covered, the distance he covered to cause that damage. 
if you think about that, when you're thinking about punches and when you're thinking about all these weapons, your hands have to be in the perfect place right by your head to have that short a line of distance. And it's very hard to generate that much power that close. A headbutt literally goes from here to here. Just this can KO someone. It's actually incredibly fascinating how little movement you need to damage someone because the skull is such a hard, hard weapon. It's such a hard, bony weapon. Now, it depends what you hit with, obviously. If you look, he was kind of turning himself sideways and hitting with this area right here. What I like to call the receding hairline. But let's not talk about that, please. Okay? And then this area right here is incredibly effective, too. So you'll see headbutts are always around the crown. Is this the crown? What is this? What do you call this? The hairline. They're always around the hairline. This is what you're hitting with. Okay? And when you look at that, you don't want to hit with the temples. You want to keep it kind of in this range right here. When you think about how effective a weapon that is in street self-defense, often you are the shorter guy in a street self-defense situation. Often the person is bigger than you. They see you as a victim and they come up to you. What's in line with their chin? What's in line with their nose? This. And it just has to, without, this is the number one, by the way, this is the number one mistake people make for headbutts. They do this. Look at my head. Instead of just going, that's all you need, just dropping in, right? They do this. They load up first so that they can drop in. Now, if you're fighting a good guy, the second he goes back, they're going to headbutt you. You know what I mean? So you're load up your headbutt. They're going to headbutt you or they're just going to drop in an elbow. Now, here's the one reason why, again, headbutts are a little bit, in many ways, a potentially better supplemental tool than elbows in certain situations. One, your hands are not up. If you get caught and you've screwed up, and I've told you this many times if you watch this channel, and should always be here. When your hands are here to get an elbow to here, it's very quick. So it's this, this. It's still slower than this. This is still going to be magnitudes faster. Okay, so from the clinch, if my hands are already here and I just drop in, I grab your head and I drop in, that'll make it really easy for me to start elbowing you. It'll loosen you up if these headbutts haven't knocked you out. This is, by the way, this weird hand thing I'm doing here is me grabbing the back of your neck. I know it doesn't make sense, but just imagine with me for a moment, if you will. Okay, so we see it, obviously, in Lethway. Let's just look a little bit more Lethway here. See how brutal this is. See, always in the clinch, these grindy clinches, you can finish a person off. Again, that's the one we just saw. Beautiful. So these are these are examples. This is unboxing. That's an accidental headbutt. But you see, these are the toughest people in the world. And even with accidental headbutts, they get these massive hematomas. Their orbital bones break. They, they just get messed up just from slight clashes of the head. People underestimate. That was a beautiful headbutt. That's a beautiful headbutt. That guy looks like a weird version of Vanderlei Silva. Is that Vanderlei Silva? I don't even know who that is. But uh might have been Vanderlei Silva. If you know, let me know in the comments section below. But look at how the game has changed from headbutts. Now, let's just look at the hand position here. I'm going to make myself a little bit, a little bit bigger. This is what I call the... The whale headbutt. This looks like so when you come up like that, you're generating so much force when you explode forward. Again, it's a kind of like same idea as the rhino. You're using the horn of your head to just drive up. A lot of people headbutt down. You could also drive straight up. There's certain examples of that here that are incredibly effective. Um, so if you're a short guy, you actually have both as an option. Because when you drop down, you're gonna drop down right into their nose. But when you come right up into them when you explode up especially if you can get a grip on them if you could just do this you're going to be doing a really powerful upward headbutt okay and there it is again now i want to look at this in a street self-defense situation so let's just look here this guy's talking a lot of crap this guy's angry bam exactly what i just said exactly what i just said and the guy's unconscious folks he's done like that's devastating. And look how fast that was. Again, it's the speed of it that's scary. Okay, so, I mean, <clears throat> you're talking about a split second here. Let's just look at this. This guy's talking a lot of crap. Again, hands down. What do I always tell you guys? Hands up before the fight starts. Here is both people have their hands down. What's the best weapon? The best weapon's the headbutt. I don't recommend leaving your hands down at that range, but if they already are, that's the weapon you got to use. Let's turn up the volume there. Now, this guy here, this is an interesting example. He's starting problems with his neighbor. He blocks the camera. The guy comes out. He clearly has a smug smirk. That's the end. 
Now, these guys are amateurs. They're not pro fighters, but that literally just decimated the dude. Now, if you look what happens here, he did load up his head back. If you look at the street examples of these headbutts, let's just go back here. He does load his head back, right? Let's just look there, right? Let's see if we're fast enough. Oh, no, he didn't. He just went right in. That guy's a pro. Okay. He did load his head back. This is an interesting example of a headbutt also. Because we often think of it from like a standing position. But look at this. You get on top, you're in mount or you're in the guard. Look how fast you can finish a fight here with headbutts. It's already done. It was done after the first one. Now, these are extremely devastating because the guy literally has all of gravity and his weight coming down with his head into the guy's chin. And the only thing under the guy is the ground. So his jaw has no place to move. Not exactly how I want to spend my days. This is interesting. So this guy, this little kid, is being picked on by this guy sitting behind him. And I've already watched this, so unfortunately we missed the whole lead up. This kid's filming him. I want to put on the volume. Oh. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a broken nose. And you know how I know. Like the guy right here. Look at that right there. Sometimes you get what you ask for in life. You know what I mean? So this was just like an interesting way to look at headbutts. These are the videos I wanted to show today. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more about the structure of the headbutt, the common mistakes people make, and then how can we use them in training. So number one, if your combat sport does not use headbutts, and that's your life if you're trying to be a UFC fighter. Obviously, training with them makes no sense. If you do want to train for self-defense, one thing you have to do with headbutts is you cannot play with them. So you have certain options. You could do the kudo route. And if you haven't seen the kudo route, they use these crazy helmets that cover their face and are protective. There's other companies that make full face gear, protective face gear. That's option number one for training with headbutts. Option number two for training with headbutts is one lower down, kind of the combat sambo approach, which is having something that at least pads this area. Now you could put significantly more padding, but then you could at least drop your head into the person. They're aware that they got hit and you're not causing significant damage. I actually prefer that method over the kudo approach. I find these big alien spaceman suit helmets create very many bad habits. Your target acquisition in terms of like landing your punches has changed because you can hit them on the side of the helmet. People's peripheral vision gets messed up. It's just weird breathing in that thing. So it just changes the way you fight. Whereas if you just have a headgear that's here, sure, it does still affect your peripheral vision, but it's not the same. You still feel it hitting your face. Okay. The third way to train is obviously in a controlled environment, not sparring with it, but doing drills, at least making it somewhat alive where you drop a little bit. Now, I always say this. I say, if you're training something and you are training it in a way where you are not making contact, you will develop the habit to not make contact. It's my problem with point fighting. It's my problem with play sparring where you're not touching each other. There has to be some degree of contact. I'm not saying it has to be hard, but you have to learn how to put your range right. And headbutts specifically need, even though they're a short range of movement, they need a full range of movement. And so if I was going to train him, I would train him specifically the combat sambo way. I'm a big fan of combat sambo in case you haven't noticed over our, the year and a half of potentially watching this channel. Now let's look at the mistakes. Mistake number one, headbutts require a strong neck. If you're going to take this serious, strengthen your neck. It'll actually make your headbutts much stronger because what you are not doing is trying to whiplash yourself. You're not trying to do this. It is your body moving forward. Okay. That's why when I see people lean back, which is mistake number two, they are going to lose a little bit of the power that they can even generate just from driving in, just from a solid movement. Now, my neck does get tight as I do it because I'm trying to reinforce all of this. So as I headbutt, I do need to strengthen my own weapon, which is all of this. Because for whatever reason, if I hit the wrong part, this is the downside of headbutts, I could damage myself. I could land with my nose. I could land with my own chin. I could land with my orbital. These can all break on another part of his face. The other mistake I can make is that I land this part of my head on a part of his head that's just as strong. And we have what you would call a clash of heads, ladies and gentlemen. And it hurts me just as much as it hurts him. So when I do it, I just, I don't indicate. What's the word again when you pull something back? When you show them you're going to do it. I know that word, but I'm slow motion today. And then, so from here, I don't want you to indicate that you're going to hit them. 
and just drop forward or as they showed there come up into it those are my views on headbutts and start training with them start getting sensitive to them start feeling them you're only going to know how to defend them if you fight against them the other thing i will say is this rhino position part of the reason i love it so much right if you look here if i'm the shorter tucked guy even from this what i call the passive protective stance there is no real opportunity to headbutt me here because this is enough in the way that it's a deterrent even just subconsciously. The other thing is that this elbow is a great defense against a headbutt because if you come to headbutt and this elbow just shoots up, you're going to headbutt my elbow. Who's winning that one? All right. Listen, I hope you like this video. Please like and subscribe. Nothing more fun than watching some KOs with headbutts. Fun way to spend our Friday night together. By the way, go to InsideFightingStore.com. Thanks.